Mitsu Shadow Trooper is in the Dork Lair! Welcome to another Dork Lair action figure review. Today I'm taking a look at the Bandai Tamashi Nation's movie realization on Mitsu Shadow Trooper from that samurai themed line. And right off the bat, I got to give a big shout out to my buddy Joe Tavano from the Bruise and Blasters podcast. He actually found this really good deal on these, and we went in, uh, we each got one. It was like a buy one, get one free thing. So thank you, Joe, for hooking me up. And if you want to hear Joe's impressions of this figure, check out Bruise and Blasters episode 214. Now, let's get into this review. And getting a quick look at the packaging, you can see it's got a great image of the figure on the front and then a uh, profile photo on the side there. On the back, you've got all the different parts as well as another figure. Uh, you can see right here, this is the blue fin release. I believe the regular like Japan release was a was like a Tamashi web exclusive. You can see the character name on the side of the box. And then just one more part that I like to kind of show off with this packaging is that you have, um, I just love the inside of the packaging on these. Um, you've got like this cool, like really nice looking display. Uh, sort of display um, insert on that side and then a long time ago in the galaxy far far away all right and because i use a black background the lighting can be a little trickier when it comes to getting into the details um, with a black figure like this but here we go so the sculpt paint and details very uh, typical of this line you have a almost like skeletal kind of bone um, skull quality to it much more so than a regular stormtrooper and this is the shadow trooper and i looked it up and i'm not a samurai or feudal japan expert in any way and i apologize in advance for any inaccuracies i may represent like um an upside down sword or something anyway so uh the Anmitsu was basically like a, a, from what I gather, some sort of spy um, for like the um, the feudal leaders, and uh, hence kind of like taking the Shadow Trooper concept from Star Wars and then mashing it up with the um, you know feudal Japan spy um, network kind of kind of thing going on. And taking a look at that face mask, um, there is definitely some like weathering throughout the panel details um, you get this helmet here with these lines on the top and you can definitely see some grime mixed in there and some little accent colors just to give it a little more depth and um, I think it's great I think it looks fantastic there's not a lot of paint to, per se to talk about on a figure like this because it's pretty much all black but they have done a nice job his chest is like um almost like a rib cage type thing. And you can definitely see like that contrasting lighter uh, grime kind of kind of filling in the mix there over to the shoulder armor here. And then you have a softer sort of flat looking under suit that's represented um, here at the arms and then like at the legs there that's got a little flat or matte kind of finish as opposed to the patina shine of all of the armor parts that have again that that same sort of grayish shadowing um, some really nice details around the waist um, you have a little item on the belt over here the belt itself is sort of supposed to be a purple rope and then you have a smaller uh, non-functioning uh, smaller blade along the front and you have a place where you can attach the scabbard of the um, of the katana blade and then a little pouch in the back sort of a throwback to you know like the regular stormtroopers in their little storage compartment on the back there and that's gold metallic color looking pretty cool and then as you bring it down these big balloony pants and even though it's kind of big and this figure is like kind of thick and puffy and stuff. Um, it does have some great articulation as well. So nothing's terribly limited, even though it is kind of bulky. Um, these pieces here, part of the skirt, are actually pegged into the leg. They're sort of, I think they might be glued in there. Um, so that's one thing just to be aware of. Like those don't pull up on, at all, uh, which is a little bit different, I think, from some of the other figures. And then you come down and you got like a throwback to the original Stormtrooper boots that have like the 
this sort of ring around the knee, and then this one just has the, the kneecap kind of piece right there. And again, um, nicely weathered sort of, uh, you know, that, there's that, that kind of worn leather patina sort of armor thing going on with, with the, uh, the boots and things like that. So I love the details on these guys. Um, the retail price, you know, is like 80 bucks. So, you know, you got to expect to have a nice quality detailed figure there. Um, but when you start paying, like, I think this was like 37 bucks. Um, you really start to feel like you're getting a lot for your money when you're getting deals. And these figures are often available for, for deals. They don't, you're, you're not necessarily going to be paying the full price all the time on these. Okay, so one other thing about the helmet is that these pieces here are um, sort of a soft rubbery material and they can move around to add to the articulation over there. But yeah, so I think that'll just about do it for the sculpt paint and details. And to see how he looks next to a few other action figures, we'll start off with he has his Darth Vader counterpart. And you can see there's uh, a lot of similarities in the paint, um, at least the black parts of Vader. And then another um, realization figure, a manga realization, that is the Captain America figure. And moving into some other lines, we have... A 1.0 Mythic Legions figure scales pretty well in my opinion. And finally, a Mezco 112 Collective Batman. So you can get a sense there. Um, definitely a little bit bigger than the, than the Mezco stuff. But looks pretty good next to the Mythic Legions. Alright, so in addition to the fists that come already on the figure, we have a few different sets of hands. So this is uh, to grip the sword. And then you have a set that's a little more closed, and those, I believe, are used to grip the little darts that he comes with. And then he comes with trigger hands so that he can grip his, um, his rifle in either hand. And finally, he comes with these kind of op more open gripping hands, and that's uh, the, the hand that can hold the scabbard of the, the katana. Speaking of which, you have this right here. It's got um, a nice sort of bluish purple accent on the handle and then you have a silver blade right there and the scabbard's pretty plain there's not much to it just black solid black but it functions well and also comes with this blaster so this is basically like a uh, flintlock old-fashioned kind of gun but you can see there's um, some black paint like sort of the base wooden parts are painted in black and then you have the barrel and the different kind of like metal components are this gunmetal color. And then in addition to that, you have a little bit of some rust weathering kind of going on in there as well. And then the little flint lock actually moves. And then finally, he comes with these two sort of like throwing dart knife type things, um, almost like little spearheads for throwing. And um, I, I'm not sure the name of these, but uh, they have like a nice purple wrapping around the handle painted on there. Some nice little detailed sculpting. You can see the edges around like it's kind of forged steel or something. And then, um, you know, there's a little bit of blue on the tip. I'm not sure what that's supposed to mean. But, you know, this being a spy or a secret agent, possibly assassin, maybe a little poison on the tip. I'm not sure. But these are pretty cool little pieces and they fit really well in that kind of like more closed gripping hand and look really good um, posing with him. And finally, for articulation, um, there's a lot of great articulation on these figures. So the head can look up that much, and it can look back down quite a bit. It can um, sort of rock side to side and spin all the way around. So there's a lot of great motion in the head. And then the arm articulation, you can see there's sort of like a ball and hinge type thing in there. But then buried inside, there's a barbell. So there's also a butterfly articulation. Um, and the arm will swing all the way around. Um, this piece right here is on a little ball joint as well, and that's kind of like um, pegged in there, and it has its own articulation, so you can kind of position it however you want. At the top of the bicep, there's also a rotation up there as well to give it a little bit, um, a little more movement there. And then the elbow has a double joint, and he can bring his elbow up quite a bit. There's no swivel or anything in the um, in the forearm or anything like that. So you do have to sort of rely on that top joint up there. 
can be a little tricky sometimes. And then you can see the wrist joint right there. It's got a hinge and swivel. So if you pop the hand back on, which go on really nicely, um, the hand will turn all the way around and then it can hinge back and forth. The waist is on a ball and can kind of crunch forward this much and then crunch back that much. My last Stormtrooper, the regular Stormtrooper, was super loose and this would pop off easy, but I have had not had that issue at all with this one, even though it's, I think, a lot of the similar kind of parts going on here. The legs on mine are really tight, um, but they do articulate very nicely kicking forward that far, even with all of that, um, you know, that ballooning pants going on. It does come out to the side when you kick, so it's kind of limited in how straightforward you can bring it, but pretty cool that it can kick that far up with considering how bulky it is. And you can rotate them up at the top of the joint up there. Um, splits wise, they can go pretty decently, but again, there's like, there is definitely some limitation with the skirt, like preventing you from going really much further out. Um, and then the knees are double jointed and can swing up this far. And kind of like the forearms, there's no rotation at the shin or the calf muscle or anything like that. Uh, and the feet are similar to the hands. They can rock side to side. Um, it's, it's more of an angled peg, but he can get out that far with, the, uh, with that angled peg. And it can rock back out the other side this way. Uh, and you can see, if you look in there, you can see the hinge that'll swing this down this far and then back up that far. So I'm always impressed with the articulation on these guys because they are kind of bigger and chunkier with lots of armor and lots of different pieces going on. But, um, you know, they do a great job of bringing in that articulation and uh, making them very, very poseable and just a lot of fun to play with. These guys are just beautiful on the shelf. They're fun toys to mess around with. Um, like I said, you can, I don't think I showed this yet, but you can put the scabbard onto this belt piece like that. And then put the sword in there. I've also noticed that if you want to, I don't think it's intended for this, but if you want to, you can take the rifle and put it on here like this and almost make it look like he's kind of storing his rifle. So that's kind of cool too. Uh, but there is no storage for the two little um, dart things. There's nowhere to like store them. Like I know, I think I don't um, have it right now, but I think Boba Fett, you can store these types of things like on his boots and stuff like that. But uh, I'm, unless I'm missing something, I'm not sure where to store them. He's also got a hole in his back that I'm assuming is for this armor is probably used on another figure. And I'm assuming that hole is used somewhere else on some other figure because there's nothing to peg into that hole on this particular figure. But yeah, so um, I like it. I think it's an awesome release. I'm going to continue to collect this line. I'm really looking forward to the first order stuff. So this fall, I think like September, October, November, they're going to be doing um, a first order Stormtrooper, Kylo Ren, and Captain Phasma, which looks incredible. I also have Jango and um, Boba Fett on the way. There was like a there was like a really good deal on the Bluefin site. If you're not on that site, check it out. They'll sometimes bundle like a lesser uh, demand one with a higher demand one. So you can kind of get a good deal if you don't have that lesser demand one yet. It's like a really good price. Like I think Boba and Django came to like 125, I think was the deal. So that's quite an awesome price because Boba until this reissue has been super hard to find in somewhere in like the... Uh, 150 to 200 dollar range even so it's nice to see that one getting a reissue and that'll pretty much do it for my review and thanks for watching don't forget like i said earlier go check out bruise and blasters joe tavano with the hookup on this figure um one of the best podcasts out there star wars if you like star wars just go listen to bruise and blasters those guys are awesome so much fun the star wars party Remember to follow me on Instagram at TheDorkLair and on Twitter at DorkLair and check out the DorkLair Collecting Podcast. And until next time, may the Force be with you. DorkLair!